Well, so far during Guns of the African Bush War, we've talked about the guns of the good guys. Now we're going to talk about the guns of the bad guys. And this gun right here is generally thought of as a gun of the bad guys. This is the SKS rifle, and specifically this model is the Model 59-66, and it's made by Zastava Arms in the former Yugoslavia. Of course, during the Cold War, and while the African Bush Wars were going on, the Iron Curtain and the Warsaw Pact were intact, and you had Yugoslavia. Now what is interesting about this gun? Well first of all, this gun was designed in the Soviet Union by Sergei Simonov. That's where one of the S's in SKS comes from. Sergei Simonov. You got the Simonov rifle. And the Simonov rifle was designed to shoot what? The world famous 762 by 39 As a matter of fact, in Russia, this was the gun that basically kicked off the 762 by 39 now Simonov designed this gun and it was ready to go by 1943, but it didn't see a whole lot of service in World War II. However, by the time World War II was over and the Cold War had begun, these rifles were in production all over the world and the Chinese made them, all the Soviet allies, the Warsaw Pact countries started making licensed copies of the SKS. But what do we know about the SKS? The SKS uh, it has, it's a gas-operated gun, it's relatively long, has a hardwood stock here, and it has a fixed 10-round magazine. You load this by pushing the rounds from the top down into the magazine, you shoot, 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 bang, the bolt locks back, you grab a stripper clip or loose rounds if you've got them, shove them down in there, and you go back to town, right? Well, what was the great advantage of the AK-47? Well, there were several advantages, but one of the advantages was the fact that it took detachable magazines. So the feature of having a pistol grip, and the AK is actually shorter, the AK is a shorter gun, it's more compact, it weighs less, and it has a detachable magazine. So the die was essentially cast. I don't know if uh, Simonov and Kalashnikov, or Kalashnikov, I don't know if they had a rivalry or if they were drinking buddies or what, but the Kalashnikov, replaced the Simonov. So what did you have? Well, if you're the Soviet Union or China or any of the big countries, you, now that you're replacing this rifle with millions of AKs or AKMs or Type 56s or whatever you want to call them, what have you got? You've got warehouses full of perfectly good, probably only maybe 10, 15 years old, maybe 20 at the most, SKSs. What are you gonna do with these things? Well, you're not gonna throw them away. What you're gonna do, if you're a good uh, follower of the people's revolution, if you're a good communist, you go to Southeast Asia, if you're China, and you give truckloads of these to the Viet Cong. Now, if you're China or Russia, or Soviet Union, and you're trying to make inroads into the countries of Africa, if you're trying to stir up trouble in Angola, Zaire, Zambia, you name it, what do you do? Well, you go down there and you bring Connex boxes full of SKS rifles and you hand them to your little brown communist brothers and you say, go forward and kill the capitalists. Go do bad things. Now, obviously, the top tier units or the highly trained units uh, would have AKs or AKMs, but your average villager, so let's say you are a Soviet or a Chinese political officer, and you go into a village in Angola, where these were used quite often against the Portuguese. These rifles were used by the anti-Portuguese forces in Angola. You go into Mozambique, and you say, hey, you hate the evil capitalists, right? And they, all the peasants are sitting around, and they're like, yeah, I guess we do hate them. 
and then you're the political commissar so you say here's what we're gonna do they're brothers brothers of the people's revolution we're going to give you rifles and you're gonna go forward and you're gonna do bad things to the evil capitalists what have you so these rifles they might not have been used during the Cold War that often by frontline troops but they sure as heck fire were used by villagers, rebels, volunteer forces, reserve forces, so on and so forth. Now this gun, actually, like I said earlier, this gun uh, is the Type 59-66, and what is unique about it is it has this very long, large muzzle device. Well, the reason this is here is so that you can shoot rifle grenades with this gun. It has a rifle grenade sight right here, and it also has a gas block or an adjustable gas system. You push this in, rotate it over, and then you lift up your grenade sight. What I just did was I shut off the gas to the action, and now 90%, 99% of the gas, what doesn't come out right here, is gonna go out the muzzle to push the grenade downrange and we have a ladder sight. These are called ladder sights. And what you would do is you would line up, you'd use the tip of the grenade as your front sight, and you'd line it up, put a blank cartridge in here, not a live cartridge. Uh, if you put a live cartridge in here and shoot it into a rifle grenade, you know how many times you get to do that? One, and that's it. So you put a blank cartridge in there, load it, put the grenade on, and bloop! Hopefully everything goes well. So, ladies and gentlemen, oh, what else does this gun have? I, how could we neglect this? So you are a peasant, or you're a rebel, or what have you, and you want to kill the evil capitalists, right? And you get 10 rounds, and then you have to fish around, maybe in your bandolier, and reload it, but you're only 15 yards away. So you say, the hell with it. Take your bayonet and run and skewer them. So obviously the addition of the bayonet made these guns all that much more lethal. And the great thing, the intelligent thing that both the Russians, the Soviets, the Chinese did was they put uh, these retractable or foldable bayonets on here. You say, well, why is that a big deal? It's a big deal because these rifles were going to be handed to peasant rebels, right? You know, the guys who are just like... Previously, they were sitting around in the village just thinking, man, my life sucks. And here comes the political commissar, and he says, here's what I'm going to do for you, buddy. I'm going to give you this rifle, and he's gonna, I'm going to hand you a bandolier full of 7.62, and you're going to go forth and, and, and kill the capitalists. We don't have to worry about the rebel losing his bayonet. He didn't have to worry about having separate bayonets or not having one that fits or whatever, because it's already attached to the rifle. So when you went into the village and you handed these out, they already had the knives on them. So pretty smart design. Uh, some of these came with slings, some didn't. This is the typical, you know, leather and uh, canvas, olive drab Russian sling uh, that you see over and over and over again. So kids, so this is it, the SKS rifle. These were used all over Southeast Asia and in Africa by communists, terrorists, and rebels. Hey there folks, thanks for watching the video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Now I'd like to personally invite you to join us at GetSOTG.com. Sign up today and you'll never miss another article, radio show, or video. That's GetSOTG.com. Thanks a lot.